Jeremy's sermon text will be in Gal Galatians 2 5. To whom we gave pl place by subjects, no, not for an, an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Uh, I'll have a prayer for Brother Jeremy. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that Brother Jeremy would have a powerful sermon today, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good evening, brethren. So I'm here, and I am thankful for it. Someone once said, I think, therefore I am. So I was thinking today that God created me, therefore I think, because God created me. He, we did not exist before he gave us existence. We owe everything to God. So we don't want to get this wrong. We, brother, I, I know why the Lord drew me to this, because I, this, this sermon tonight, because I needed it. I need, I'm only speaking about the truth of the gospel continuing with the church. This doesn't just happen, brother. We are the church. The Lord is using us, so together we're doing this. Brother Given has mentioned different times, how strong is a chain? Well, it's as strong as its weakest link. Brethren, we are one body in Christ. So we have one person studying and working hard and running a good, fighting, hard, fighting a good fight of faith and running hard, but we're all in this together. So my text is, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour. What? That sounds really mean, though. It's not very nice. Not for, well, let's go back here for a second. Let's look, at, let's look what he's talking about here. Paul's talking about, he, he said that unto them that the gospel which I preach to the Gentiles, but, but to them which were of reputation, least by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false, but false, these aren't very nice brethren. These are false. False brethren, unawares, brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us unto bondage. It doesn't matter. I mean, this is not innocent. But no matter what reasoning men have for it, this is not of God. And it needs to be dealt with. And Paul, Paul was quick to deal with this. Yeah. This happened early on, brethren. Yeah. And it's still going on today. The gospel is for all men. While men may, through the flesh, add all manner of guide, guidelines and, and put, they put burdens on God's people. Weigh them down. Well, God didn't do this, but men do. God has set us free. We had a problem, brother, a problem that we could not deal with. Today we have a, well, we, listen, we have one faith, one gospel that comes from one God. We don't have many gospels. What, but why is it that there's so many different 
banners that men go to. That men, well, this is not, this is not what the Lord has done because there's only one church. There's only one body of Christ. The gospel pre uh, Paul preached came from Christ. This is the gospel that saves and keeps us all the way to glory. So we don't want to get this wrong. We don't want to get it wrong, and we don't want anybody else to, to mess this up. To come in and start, start twisting it and start adding things and taking things away and putting burdens on God's people. No. This is not from God. God's people have had the burdens lifted off of them because of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why we fight to keep the faith. We must fight. Amen. We must be alert and aware of the truth to continue to let the gospel to, to do its work, not, not to let somebody come, out, come in and muddy the waters and, and do, do what God has not compelled them to do. Today we have much confusion of what, what do we stand for as believers in Christ Jesus? Who are we? People ask these questions. It's a, what, what should we be doing? Should we be good feeding the poor? Should we be, we should be good people. Okay, all these things fall in line as you look to God. As our focus is on God and what he's doing through his son, Jesus Christ, these things fall into line, but this is not our focus. So it, it didn't take long for the Galatians to be moved off the mark. And it won't take long for any of us that if we if we lay down our guard, if, if, we, if we, we don't continue in the gospel, if we don't continue together, I'm talking about together. I'm not, we, we don't just point to one person. We are in this together. It won't take long for another gospel to come in if we get lazy. See, Paul wasn't lazy, though. He was serious. Because he felt the burden of the churches. After all Paul had gone through, what, was it, what, was, what really bothered him the most? The care of the churches. And that because of false brethren. See, we do not want to be naive about this, brethren. We got false, false brethren that come in. Oh, they may sound nice. They may have an, a, a good speech. They may come up and they, they may look good and, and sound nice, but they're false. If what they're saying doesn't line up with what Paul was preaching, that's false. So God works through his church and his people. It's God that keeps his people. He is our focus. Comparing the truth to what we hear is a must. I said comparing the truth. Is it true what we hear? Does it line up with what Paul preached? Because if it doesn't, it doesn't matter how nice it sounds. It's false. Quickly, we, can, we all can get off track if we don't together confront contradicting teachings that are not in line with what Paul preached. One of the biggest problems today is a lack of knowing what the Word of God says. Is there anybody here that, and you don't have to raise your hand, but that does not spend time in the Word of God? This is dangerous and deadly. See, since we are one body in Christ, we depend on one another. 
to know what the Word of God says so that together we can stand for the truth. Well, if anyone falls into this category, I say, today is a good day to start. Start knowing what God's Word says. We're not here to beat each other up. We're here to build one another up, to be helpers of one another's faith. Contradicting teachings are not only dangerous, but they can kill our faith. On the surface, they sound good, but the root is bad. Intended to get the church off the truth of the gospel. Paul made it his mission to make sure the truth of the gospel would continue with the church. Because this... The, there's nothing more important, brother. I have problems, and you have problems. I had problems today at work, but I have no bigger problem than the problem that we had with sin. And it had to be dealt with. Amen. Christ dealt with it. Amen. So what... What Paul did when he, when he was working with this, with these false brothers, was he was working with what they did. It didn't stop with Paul. It continues with us. We have the same Holy Spirit within us. We, we, as a body of Christ Jesus, Romans 5, uh, 2, 5, together also make it our aim to make sure we know the truth of the gospel and in this way, we are helpers of the church to continue in the truth. Fighting the good fight of faith is not yielding to a lie. It's not nice. <laughs> it's not loving. It's not kind. And you're not a hater for talking against it. Actually, you're a lover of the brethren when you point it out. Example today, we have a teaching that Jesus loves everyone no matter what they believe, no matter what they say, no matter what they do. And if you disagree with that, you're labeled a hater. Actually, we have all kinds of teachings today that if you come against them, especially depending on where you're at, be careful because you could lose your head. But so be it. It's not hate. Speaking the truth, no matter where you are, no matter what, that's not hating. That is actually loving. Paul was beaten. He was stoned. All because he spoke the truth. Holding to the truth of the gospel that saves lives is loving. Jesus did not die on the cross just because he loved us so much, that places all the focus on us instead of God. He was doing the will of the Father. John 5, 30 says, I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. That's what Jesus was doing, and that's what we're doing too. Amen. Satan works through men to bring another gospel. Normally in a way that looks on the appearance as loving and kind. But it's not the truth of the gospel. So it's not loving and kind. Using scripture in ways that to those who do not continue in the truth daily can be moved away. Well then who's going to be there to move them back? We are brethren. Those who love the truth. Those who continue Moving the focus from God to men or other things will kill the church. We as the people of God must know the truth of the gospel and do not yield to another, no matter how much pressure comes on us. Paul was pressured, brethren. He did not yield. The Galatians did, but he did not. 
The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation, Romans 1, 16. It is the answer to our problem. Anything else does not provide power to continue to run the race all the way to glory. We, we need the, the, the gospel to get us from here. It, the, the gospel is what, how we came in. It's what's going to keep us, and it's what's going to take us all the way to glory. Living a good life has no power. Focus on self only drains God's people. And then slowly, they start to drift away. And then, how did I get here? Well, it's, it just started really slowly with a false gospel. All false teachings share in that they do not give life to God's people, but it drains them until the, it kills them. It drains them and adds heavy weights to them. Many of us have seen this. Some of us have been subjected to this, victims of false gospel that did not produce a lasting love of the truth, but see the gospel, the truth of the gospel does. It, it draws us to God. Our love to continue with Christ by false gospels slowly is replaced with a love for something else. Someone else besides God. This love may be a desire to be accepted by other men or, or a group, but see, other men cannot save. The, quote, right group they cannot save. Or the focus removed from Christ to us and what we are doing. See, these are, these are the heavy burdens when, when you say, what? Yeah, but, you know, yes, the gospel, but we also, yeah, we, that's good, but it, the gospel is enough. The power of God that comes from the real gospel gives God's people resources required to be stable for growth and fruitfulness. A false gospel takes away and makes us unstable in our spirit. Once we hear the gospel and receive it, we are not on automatic pilot. We must continue in this, brethren. Yes, amen. We must be continue and be strong. And as we continue and be strong, the Lord gives us power. We are in need of extensive involvement in the truth. Jesus gave himself for our sins. The answer for our sin problem is found in Jesus and no other place. Jesus offered himself to God and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Ephesians 5 2. For, he did this for us to God. Anything that places the focus on us or anything else or any other man, this is a false gospel. Because we have no power in ourselves or any other man. Our power comes from God. And what he's doing through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. It was God who was offended, brethren. Yeah. He was offended by our sin. We were enemies of God, Romans 5.10. Jesus had to give himself or we could do nothing to change our sin problem. See, I, I tell you, when I think about this, my problems that may seem very big become very small. It's all perspective. When you're looking to God 
and you see what he's doing, the one who gave you existence, the one who created you, the one who sent his son to die for you, the one who did all things necessary for us to have, to be with him for eternity, well, this changes the way you th look at day-to-day -day life. This changes the way you look at how, whatever problems you have. I mean, brother, I know some of you are going through some big problems. Life-changing problems. But there's no other problem bigger than sin. There's no other problem that we have than being separated from our God. This is our God we're talking about. To being separated from him for eternity. We have no other problem like that problem. But God did take care of that problem. Jesus had to give himself or we could do nothing to change this. We can often be bogged down by worrying about day-to-day -day life. Problems that we may have today, but these problems will come and go. Our life is but a vapor. Here today, then tomorrow, but see what the gospel does, it prepares us to look ahead. Day-to-day -day problems the only thing they do is focus us on today. But preparing for standing before God, well, there's nothing more important than that. Amen. As with the Galatians, another gospel is one that does not have divine support and must be tossed out. Because it has no solid foundation, and it will not prepare us for glory. It will not prepare us to stand before our God, which is our main objective. Whatever we're, go whatever we're um, planning for today and tomorrow and the next week and the next month, it all should be w within the frame of we're going to be standing before God soon. So we, so we make our plans. And we, we have things that are needful for our life, but we hang on to these things very loosely because soon, very soon, I mean, some of you brethren know better than me. We, yesterday, you were like eight years old running around, and next thing you know, where did the time go? Brethren, my hair is standing on top, on the back of my neck, just thinking about, very soon, we're gonna be standing before our God. And whatever, every, anything else that we did was not as important as the preparation that we needed to be, to be ready for that day. Amen. The gospel makes us ready. Amen. If the truth of the gospel does not continue with the church, we will be anchored to this world. Amen. And we will not be prepared. The truth in the gospel will bring our focus on the future and prepare us for the ultimate comfort standing before our God. We will be prepared for that day. This will change the way God's people look at what they do from day to day without beating them over the head, without taking a sledgehammer over the head and saying, you got to do this and you got to do the gospel, it changes the way we see things, the way we live our lives. It will compel God's people to be holy as God is holy. If the truth of the gospel is to continue with the church, God's people must stand for the truth and not yield to false teachings as Paul did not yield in our text that's before us. Faith does not come from lies and it will not be sustained by them either. Amen. Impressive words and a few references to how nice Jesus is will not sustain us. But the truth of what God is doing through his son, Jesus Christ, this will give us strength to endure. Amen. Endurance is what we need. Amen. When the truth is under attack, 
we the church must cast down, rebuke, fight, wrestle, to make sure that the truth of the gospel continues just as Paul did because the church is at stake. God will be on our side, brethren, as we make it our aim to do this together. God will give us power to continue. Thank you, brethren.